Hello and welcome back to another NAS comparison. Today I want to talk about two half-depth rack mount chassis that have been released about two years apart and both from Synology. You guessed it, today I want to talk about the RS1221 Plus and the RS1219 Plus. The same family and generation of NASes from Synology. Say generation series really it is their half-depth eight bay rack mount solution for SMB, small, medium business. Now, before we go any further, let's just tackle it straight on. The brand new unit is definitely the better of the two. You're getting more for your money and it's just ultimately a better solution and it definitely has proven you know, that over the years have gone on, technology do invest in their hardware, not just the software. But today's video isn't just about which is better, because let's face it, I just answered that and you can watch another video. No, wait, come back. This is about one, whether you should upgrade to this device, so maybe you've got the predecessor, the 1219 Plus, or one of the units that came before it, or the same sort of family gen, and whether you should upgrade to this, is it a big enough upgrade, but also just how much better is it ultimately because newer devices you expect them to be better technology moves forward things get smaller and more efficient more faster more faster awful there but it doesn't necessarily mean that they are the big enough jump to justify their purchase anyway is this an example of Synology taking their foot off the gas or true innovation so by comparing these two we hopefully hope to solve those two or three points so we're going to tackle this in five separate ways. Price, internal hardware, internal hardware, software, and the verdict. So let's go for that first one right there, price. So in terms of price, straight away off the bat, the older device unit is definitely lower in price. If you are on a very, very tight budget and you can't just scale the storage and only add a couple of drives if you choose, and you really are pushing the boundaries of your budget and you're already, you've already you broken into four figures and you're looking at like a grand 1200 nicker, it has to be said that the older generation unit is definitely the better price. Whether that is because it is an older gen that's now on offer for clearance and stuff like that in the sales, or simply at the time of its release and the newer generation's release, the older generation unit is certainly the better of the two in terms of price. However, it's not just about the numbers, it's about the value, and that is where things immediately switch back to the 1221 Plus. It's just better value overall. The price difference between them um, is only around £100, if that, shopping around, and that 100 quid, you just get so much more for your money that we're going to talk about later in the video. So bear in mind, in terms of price, the older generation certainly wins on the numbers. You know, technically, it is a better price. But what you're getting for your money, the bare metal server, you are definitely doing a lot better for your money on the 1221 Plus. Which brings us to internal hardware. This is the area where there is the biggest difference between these two units. In a little of two years difference release between them, the internal hardware is just significantly better on that newer unit. And that, I mean, there's barely a part about it in the traditional PC builder stakes where the new unit doesn't surpass the old unit noticeably. The CPU in the older unit is an Intel Atom based processor there and Atoms have always, people have had mixed relationships and even that Atom is quite an older one as well. That Atom CPU there, quad core at 2.4 gigahertz per core is a 64 bit um, Intel x86 processor but it's older gen with no embedded graphics and it supports DDR3 memory arriving with 2 gig by default inside. Now the newer generation unit arrives with an AMD Ryzen embedded server class processor the V1500B. It's a quad core 2.1 gigahertz processor that's also not graphically embedded and technically a lower frequency but it's so much more powerful and efficient that it will do more than the older generation Atom, we're utilizing less power, ergo you can do more with it. Also that CPU opens the door to DDR4 memory, much faster frequency too, with 1800 megahertz memory versus 2400 and above memory on the newer generation unit. Not only that, but the 4 gig, not 2 gig, 4 gig of memory on the newer one is ECC error code correction memory, which checks data that passes through and will apply healing. Uh, i.e. repair files and data as it passes through to avoid things like bit rot gradually knackering your data. Now, 
it's not just the architecture of the CPU and memory that all of us PC guys are very aware of. There are other improvements as well, such as the PCIe slot. Now, we'll talk a little bit more about what you can do with that at uh, the next part of this comparison, but it's worth highlighting that the older generation device arrives with a PCIe Gen 2 times 8 slot there. Gen 2 being around um, 500 megs. Um, on that lane times eight so you are looking at 4000 megs throughput on supported cards but bear in mind it is still pcie 2 gen and a lot of the upgrade cards that came out around that time the m2d18 um, and the uh, older generation of 10g cards were pcie gen 2 however the new stuff is pcie 3 which is what the new generation rack mount is as well at PCIe Gen 3 times 8 This device has a PCIe lane that can support up to 8,000 megs on there. So you can support dual port 10G cards. You can support the dual combo NVMe 10G card, the E10M20 Ti card inside this device. That PCIe lane opens the door to faster performance and given that these are both 8 bays, you can hit that 1,000 megs, sure. So, you know, you can saturate a 10G, but utilising combinations of SSD caching and utilising SSDs in the main storage pool will allow you to exceed 1,000 megs and start hitting the 12 to 1,500, whereas when you, that is where you're going to need those better performing cards overall. And the PCIe upgradability is just greater on the internal hardware of the newer generation 1221 Plus than it is on the 1219 Plus. This leads us to external hardware, where there's almost no real, uh, you know, visible change. They have both got almost exactly the same half-depth chassis. They both arrive with both single and dual PSU architecture at 30 and 40 centimetre depth, respectively. They both arrive with one GBE LAN, which, let's be honest, is a bit disappointing. They've both got that PCIe upgrade, and of course, the newer gen has a better option there. They've both got USB 3.2 Gen 1, so 5 gigabits per second external storage. And they both arrive with the ability to expand with four more drives with the RX 418. What I'm saying here is, in terms of external hardware, they're near enough identical, and the only advantage we can give goes to that 1221 plus because of that PCIe. It has the ability to upgrade the network interface um, ports using cards, the NICs, NICs, and allow greater and more performing network connections externally with the storage device. That said, you do need to get an extra card for that, and that isn't exactly an option that's not available on the old one. There's just a greater depth of card coverage, such as the combo card, available on this newer generation unit, which doesn't really fall to fruition on the older gen. Now, this leads us into the software section, and this is another area where things are largely identical on the small form anyway. Both of them arrive with the support of DSM 6.2 and DSM 7 available in beta right now, hopefully coming to a full version in early 2021. Both of these arrive with support of the full collaboration suite from Synology of Chat, Drive, Calendar, Mail, all and Drive uh, Active Backup Suite as well, as well as Video Station, Photo Station, Music Station, Surveillance Station, Virtual Machine Manager and more, with both of them arriving with support of the BTRFS file system or that's the file system twice there. Um, both of them have got the great advantages that BTRFS brings to the table, but more importantly, they both arrive with support of SHR, Synology Hybrid RAID. So they both arrive with that great fluid RAID system where you can mix and match drives throughout the product's lifespan and make the most of the additional capacity they bring to the table. But again, because of that internal architecture, because of the internal hardware, it has to be said that the performance of DSM is just going to be better on the 1221 Plus and therefore more simultaneous instances of use, more applications running at once, more stable and more higher performing VMs, more cameras and just a better all-round experience in the long term. Small groups of users aren't really going to see the advantages but once you start really maximising your interaction with this device, you've got more clients, more shares, more staff using it. That's when that extra hardware is going to keep DSM running smooth as custard long term. Which brings us to our verdict. Of course, the 1221 is the better of the two. I told you at the top of the video, but thanks for sticking around. But is it worth an upgrade? No. 
If you have a 2018 or 19 generation Synology, I don't think this is worthy of an upgrade, notwithstanding that majority of you are still well within your warranty, that there's no need to upgrade yet while you've still got warranty coverage, and therefore when you are out of that, this you, uh, the 1221 may be a little bit cheaper. But on top of that, the advantages you're getting, unless you're maxing out that device to start with, I don't think largely justify an upgrade at this time from the old gen. And if you are maxing out that Atom that you've got inside a 17 or 18 generation plus series NAS, I would start looking at Pentiums, I'd start looking at Xeons, and I'd maybe start looking at more powerful units than the 1221 as an upgrade right now. But ultimately, that has been my comparison of the RS1221 Plus and the RS1219 Plus. I hope you enjoyed it and you found it helpful. Click like if it did and subscribe to learn more. Visit the guys at span.com to get the right data storage solution for you. And of course, visit me at NAS Compares with lots of handy guides on how to make the most of your storage. I shall see you next time.